Maryland adds to Kobe Gillespie. You are Locked On Turks, your daily podcast on the Maryland Turks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, everyone? I'm Trey Moore, video content creator for 247 Sports and InsideMarylandSports.com and host of Locked On Terps, the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So thank you for making us part of your day. And some huge news, like, just dropped. As I'm recording it, I think it was like 15 minutes ago, humongous news just dropped for Maryland basketball as Maryland adds to Kobe Gillespie into their mix, into their team for next year. He announced that he will be going to Maryland after previously being at Belmont. And I cannot tell you guys how big of an ad this has been. And I can't tell you how big these last couple of days have been for Maryland basketball overall. I have not seen a past couple of days like this in a long time in Maryland basketball in terms of getting different guys, getting our number one priorities as well, getting the top guys on our board. You could not have had a better start to an off season than what Maryland basketball has had with landing Jacoby Gillespie and then a couple of days ago landing Rodney Rice. And then, of course, the video today comes out of Julian Reese announcing that he's coming back. The past couple of days that Kevin Willard has put together has been absolutely insane. But we're going to focus on Jacoby Gillespie right now because some of you guys aren't going to know his game. I had, to be honest, I didn't know who this guy was until I read more about him, until I saw more in the pool. But then I realized after doing research, after going through the stats, after going through everything about this kid, I realized how good of a player this Jacoby Gillespie kid is. This isn't like your kind of normal portal ad where it's like he'll provide depth and maybe he'll provide some shooting. Now, this guy can come in into the Big Ten and potentially be one of the better point guards to be in the Big Ten and in the country. He has that type of ability coming from Belmont. He was ranked as the top-ranked point guard in the portal by a lot. So adding this guy is like adding – it's similar to the ad of Jameer Young a couple years ago. I'm not saying he's going to have the season that Jameer Young had this year, but he has that type of pedigree and coming from a smaller school in to Maryland and just getting a guy like this I'm super excited already for next year after how bad this year went because of adding a guy like Gillespie adding Rodney Rice adding guys that can score and shoot the ball adding a top ranked point guard in the transfer portal and I know a ton of schools wanted him I know Kansas wanted him Indiana wanted him and we keep beating out Indiana for players I know Indiana was huge on this kid and really wanted this guy we beat out Indiana for Derek Queen and now we beat him out for Gillespie and I'll tell you guys it's a way too early but this team should be a tournament team next year and we're going to talk about that a lot more but this team has got a lot of talent we had people leave but we haven't had anybody that I thought was going to make a huge impact leave. But what we have on this roster right now, adding Derek Queen coming in their freshman class, adding this kid Jacoby in, adding Rodney Rice in, we should be a problem in the Big Ten. And then if Kaiser and Deshaun Harris-Smith take a step up as well, Julian Reese coming back is one of the best bigs. <sighs> I'm excited. I'm ready. I'm ready for another chance, and we got to give a ton of credit to Kevin Willard for keeping guys and then also being able to recruit at such a high level in the portal. I got to say, I don't know what this is like coming from, but I I didn't ever feel like with Mark Turgeon definitely had some pretty big recruits and was able to do some really big things recruiting, but what Kevin Willard has done in his first couple of years using the portal and in recruiting – think has been pretty big time. And if Willard continues the portal like this and continues to recruit well, I don't see a reason why Maryland basketball won't be very good in the future. And it's hard for me to say that right now because of how bad last year looked and how bad the team came together and how bad 
we had it last year. But it's hard for me to say that the way Shaquille was cooking with getting a guy like Jacoby Gillespie, a top point guard in the transfer portal, it's hard for me to say that Maryland basketball isn't going to be very good for the next couple of years. I think he fits in perfectly, perfectly for what we need. He's exactly the type of player. We had a little fill, still opening, even though we were bringing in Derek Queen and got Ronnie Wright. He still had a little bit of a hole that needed to be filled. Even though a lot of the house has been fixed, there's still some minor stuff that needed to, needed to add to the house. But instead of adding something minor, we added something huge to the house that makes it look a lot better. Maybe increase the value of our house by maybe a... a 500,000 or something like that. We added some huge renovations that really helped with this house with getting Jacoby Gillespie. But I was, I was so basically how this thing kind of went this was yesterday. A lot of people were talking about us that he was like headed towards Maryland. And that's what I thought it looked like was going to happen. But like, you never know with this kind of stuff. It was crystal ball to Maryland. And it looked like Maryland was going to be the school. So I was assuming that he was going to Maryland. But today, I actually planned on talking about how we were supposed to land this guy. I didn't think he was going to commit today. But I waited a little bit to see before I filmed this to see. And now that he's committed, I was able to talk about it. But I turned on his highlight. That's what I really want to talk about. I, there's a highlight of him. Go check it out on YouTube. Look up Jacoby Gillespie. It's from his past year at Belmont. It just goes through his highlights. It's like, I think it's because they do a, a bunch of highlights for guys that hit the portal. This YouTube channel, go look it up. It's a really cool video. So you get the idea of the type, kind of player he was. Because I really didn't know. I was like, okay. I see that he's 6'1". Like, that's really all I can see. I see that he averages 17 points and 4.2 assists and 3.8 rebounds last year for Belmont, but I wanted to get a look to see if, is this guy really, like, does he pass the eye test? Is he, like, explosive enough? Is he a good enough athlete to do these type of things in the Big Ten? And I came away saying, yes. He is really going to be a very good player for us if you go watch the highlights. He can literally do everything, and that's what I love about his game. That's my favorite part. I'm a big guy on the basketball court. When I watch and evaluate guys, kind of my a lot of my takeaways, especially for these guards, point guards, shooting guards, and for the small forward type of players, I want guys that can do everything. I think that's what a lot of best teams, best players in the world do. They can shoot the ball. They can drive the ball. They can get to the rim. They can pass the ball. They can shoot the mid-range. I like guys that can do everything and that don't have a weakness that teams can exploit. And Jacoby Gillespie doesn't have a weakness. He doesn't have a weakness in his game. Go watch the film. You'll see a little bit of everything. And if you go and watch the games, it's the same thing. If you look at the percentage that he's shooting, it's exactly where we want it. And we know Maryland was horrible shooting. We were a horrible shooting team last year. So I knew we were going to need shooting, but I didn't know we were going to get the playmaking that we get with Jacoby Gillespie. I didn't know we were going to get quite the playmaker like Gillespie is. We shot 28% from three last year, bottom of the Big Ten, a horrible percentage. It's really hard to win games like that. We bring in Jacoby, and guess what he shot last year? 38%. So we are going to be a much better shooting team next year, but Jacoby is going to be the starting point guard. That's almost a guarantee. Rodney Rice could be the starting two guard. He shoots the ball at a really high level, and he also has a complete game. And then I would guess Deshaun at the three, I guess. Deshaun's more of a two-one kind of combo guard. Uh, we'll see how it comes together, um, but Jacoby is really going to help us as a shooting team, and that's why I think he's a really good fit for us, especially with losing Jameer Young as well. Here's a guy that averaged 17. I don't know if he'll average 17 right away for us, but you guys, maybe the biggest reason I haven't even said yet, is three years of eligibility for him. He's going to be here for a while. He has a chance to take over as one of the better Maryland players. And then Rodney Rice, same thing. He still has three years of eligibility. So these are two guys that can grow. Like, next year is not just like, oh my gosh, like it's over. Like, these guys are like, they're going to be here. And Derek Queen, we don't really know with Derek Queen because of his future potentially with the NBA. But we have a core. Now, with Deshaun and Jamie and these two guys, Rodney and um, 
Jacoby, we have a core now that has been rebuilt and that is going to be in College Park for a little bit now. And Malachi Palmer also coming in into the fold. So I think we have a really we're in a really good spot. He can do a bunch of different things, and I love that he can shoot off the dribble, he can shoot off the catch, he can also get to the basket. That might be his best trait, getting to the rim. Finishes with both hands, and he also does a really good job passing the ball. So he'll be fit in right with Rivers. And like I'm up for next year's basketball season. I'm so ready for it. I'm ready to see how everyone improves. I'm ready to see how Kevin Willard puts it together. And I, I, I feel like I want to give Kevin Willard a huge hug right now. I'm like, dang, man, like you had a bad season, but you're not going to, you look like you're motivated to not have that season again. But Maryland gets Jacoby Gillespie. I legit could not be more excited for the Turks and the Turk fans. I feel like we kind of deserve this. And don't forget, we still have one more spot in the portal. It'll be interesting where it'll be used. I wouldn't mind someone that's more of a four or like a five as a backup. Or you could go big and try and get someone else really big time. But we'll see what happens with that. Julian Reese also made his official announcement that he is back. But will any other Turks hit the portal? We'll talk about it next after this ad from Amazon Fire and Better Together. Fire TV is your destination for sports. From live game from live games to highlights to in-depth analysis, Fire TV offers amazing viewing experience with smart TVs, as well as a Fire TV stick that you can plug into your existing TV that provides access to millions of movies and TV episodes, as well as free and live TV. Whether it's opening weekend for baseball or the college basketball tournament, you're going to want to have Fire TV. Fire TV recently created a Fire TV channel to deliver a constant supply of the latest video from your favorite sports brands, all for free. That includes all of us at Lockdown and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well. Fire TV channels let you dive into all the game analysis, highlights, and more to keep up to date on the latest world sports. March Madness, NBA, MLB, and lots more. Not to mention great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, cooking videos as well. Check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should. Trust me on this. To learn more, visit www.amazon.com slash locked on fire TV. Tired of the same old daily fantasy grind where you make a roster, cross your fingers, and hope for the best? We're losing on the last leg of your pick'em entry. Introducing Better Together, the first cooperative daily fantasy platform where teamwork trumps talent and you can play with your friends, not against them. Pick more than or less than on real-time player stats, strategize with your partners to boost your odds, and climb the leaderboard together. Better Together is the first cooperative daily fantasy application. Better Together offers a familiar experience for existing daily Daily fantasy players with social twists. You can play with a friend slash teammate and provide a sense of enhances and social experience of watching sports. It makes you realize that daily fantasy sports is fun alone, but a lot like other things, it's better when you're doing it together with friends. Load better together. Download better together now from the App Store and sign up using promo code Locked On for a chance to win your share of one thousand dollars in cash prizes. Remember. The code locked on because winning alone is fun, but it's better together. So Julian Reese actually made his official announcement today that he will be returning to the Turks. I already made a video about it last video. Check it out if you want. But because a bunch of sources already came out that he was coming back. But I actually want to talk about will any other Maryland basketball players now hit the portal? So Reese is coming back, but it could be interesting to see. If anybody else hits the portal, a lot of guys that I kind of already expected to hit the portal have hit the portal. Obviously, Noah Bachelor, I thought it made a lot of sense for him. It made sense for him to go, I thought. He's at going to Buffalo now. I didn't think he really had a role for him. It didn't really fit. I felt like Kevin Ward didn't ever trust him fully. It made sense for him to go. And then Caleb Swanton Rogers also is in the portal. We'll, we will see where he ends up. But he never really came into much. And then Jonathan Lamoe, the freshman, maybe the biggest surprise of the guys that entered the portal. For sure the biggest surprise. But I, it, it, there was a world where I could see Jonathan Lamoe transferring. It kind of made sense, I thought, for him to transfer. It's it just like, 
there's a lot, especially now with Jacoby Gillespie having three years of eligibility remaining, and then you have Rodney Rice at the guard spot, and then you already had Deshaun and Kaiser kind of ahead of you, and then Malachi Palmer's coming in. We'll see how he plays, and then who, and then Jahari Vaughn might be back. Like, I don't know if there's a Jonathan Luth plays next year. So it kind of made sense for him, I thought, to hit the portal. But could anyone else hit the portal? I wanted to talk about this in Louisville, Maryland, because I do think there are a couple of guys I think it's a possibility right now that could hit the portal. I don't think any of the freshmen are. I think Jamie's safe. I think Deshaun is safe. I don't think any of them are going to hit the portal. I think they're in a good spot with this team. And they're, they're going to have to compete because with Rodney and Gillespie coming in now, there's no, like, guarantee, oh, Kaiser has to start next year. Or Deshaun has to start. Like, I expect Deshaun to start, but, like, it's like it's going to be competition to start for sure. And I think we need that. I think that everyone needs to be pushed, and I don't want anyone to be comfortable on this team. But could anybody else hit the portal? I'm looking at a couple guys that I could see potentially hitting the portal. Uh, there's no reports, there's no for sure that any of these guys do, but this is kind of my thoughts, and usually, portal thoughts, usually, when you have reason to think someone's going to hit the portal, it's usually a pretty good shot they are going to. But, my first thought was Jordan Geronimo. I think it's a possibility. I thought he did good things at times last year. He was a starter for the majority of the games. I thought he was a little bit offensive limited. But I thought he did a lot of good stuff on the defense side of the ball. But the reason I think he could potentially enter the portal now is because I'm looking at Julian Reese and Derek Queen starting for sure, like 100%. That's your starting front court. You can guarantee that. You can write that in. You can book that. That's going to be your starting front court next year, Derek Queen and Julian Reese. And I think that has the potential to be really good, and I'm excited to see that. But that's why I think Jordan Geronimo losing his starting role and maybe his minutes going down and Maryland potentially bringing in another pick, that could be a reason for Maryland, for Jordan Geronimo to leave. I, I think that could make some sense. I don't know if he is. I would love for him to stay because I think that makes a really good kind of three-way trio between Queen and Reese can start, and then you can kind of rotate those three in a rotation and then play those guys, but I think there is a shot where he wants to leave. And then Maddie Torre, I do think it's possible. He's kind of the same position as Jordan Geronimo, and of course, Derek Queen is coming in, and we know when Derek Queen is starting, you can almost, that's almost 100% certain that Derek Queen will come in and start. So Maddie Torre leaving, he's also the same position as Jordan Geronimo, who played more minutes than him during the season. It's like that's a packed room. Could Maddie try and go somewhere else to play? I think he has a lot of tools. He's lanky. He's real. He's kind of raw, but he still has a lot of ability. And I would like him. I think we have a ton of depth with depth with Jordan Geronimo and Maddie next year with them not starting. But I could also see a world where they decide that they should leave. Those are the two main guys. Some people think that Jahari Vaughn could potentially enter the portal, which also can make sense with Gillespie coming in and Rodney Rice coming in. But I'll say this. I would love to keep Jahari Vaughn. If we keep Jahari Vaughn, I love where this team is at. I don't know who our third spot is going to be used on, but this team looks really good with Jahari Vaughn coming off the bench and Jimmy Kaiser potentially coming off the bench as well. I really like that team. I think it's a really good quality team to have. Good. That's a really good eight and nine man rotation right there. You think Geronimo, you think um you think Geronimo, you think Jahari Long, then you think Kaiser potentially coming off the bench, and then you think the starting lineup could could be uh Gillespie, Rice, Deshaun, Reese. Queen. I really like that. I really like that mix. But we'll see how it happens. But I could see those three guys entering the portal. But we'll see overall what happens. I love the current culture of Maryland football right now. I'll tell you about that after this ad from eBay Motors. Passing, drive, and patience is what brings home the winning trophy and is also what keeps a ride or die alive. 
Be vigorous with everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're in the speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts, for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your car is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the item you keep. Bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay Guaranteed Fit. Only available to U.S. customers. This week's March Madness Bracket Highlights is brought to you our friends at Nissan. Each week we're picking one team that stands out and a team that's pushed it further than the rest, just like any of the all-new 2024 Nissan SUVs. These guys were able to take it to the next level. The North Carolina Tar Heels can only be described as an arm dog. This one seed is as hardcore as it gets out there, so it's no wonder they secured a spot in the Sweet 16. This Thursday against Alabama in the NCAA Tournament, their favorite week by many to make a run at a championship. The Iowa State Cyclones can only be described as a path grinder. They've been throwing the rock and have really created a lane for themselves to enter the tournament as one of the hottest teams in the country. They have a date with, with Illinois on Thursday in the Sweet 16. But NC State Wolfpack are obviously this week's Nissan Rogue. This week, this team absolutely surprises all with powerful performance in their first two games of the tournament with wins over Texas Tech and Oakland, and they've set themselves up to play Marquette in the Sweet 16. They say win life for road, and that's exactly what the Golden Grizzlies have done here. Take the Nissan Rogue, the Nissan Map Pine Pathfinder, or the Nissan Armada, and go find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. I love the culture with Maryland basketball that they currently have. I think Maryland basketball is an awesome culture right now. I think Coach Loxley has built a culture that is going to be successful going forward, that's going to win games, that's going to have a great kind of feel to it. I love how what Coach Loxley has built. I love how he has built this program. If you remember, before Loxley got here, this program was in the trash. The culture was terrible. Things were not looking good. There's been multiple occasions of different things that have happened. I know you guys know some of the things that have happened. And this thing needed to be rebuilt. It wasn't looking like it was supposed to look. And players didn't want to come to Maryland. And it wasn't, like, cool to be a Maryland fan, I feel like. And it wasn't cool to play for Maryland during a certain time. And we had certain coaches. That I won't really get into, but I really want to emphasize the current culture that Maryland football has, I think it's been built the right way by Coach Loxley, and I'm going to give him all the credit for that. But the reason I say that is because I see, like, a different type of energy because I see players coming back. That's my number one thing that made me kind of want to talk about this. Players coming back is a huge indicator of how well your culture was, how well people enjoy being there. Players coming back is a big part of it. Because if they didn't really like it, but they didn't say it, they may not have said anything about it, and maybe nobody really knows, but they're not going to come back. But we got guys that are getting ready to play in the NFL, like Talia and Tarheek Hill, that are stopping by for the first day of spring practice and coming by to just say what's up and watch practice and whatever they, whatever they do there at Maryland, just have a good time. And that doesn't always happen when you have a football team, because sometimes they don't like it. They don't want to come back. I guarantee there's players that don't go back to their college because they don't like their coach. They have problems with play. Like, I don't know. But they want to be back. They want to be with the Maryland program, and I love that. They want to say what's up to Coach Loxley and spend a little bit more time with them. They want to be around the college program because the kids, I think, they like it. I mean, you can't judge everything from the videos online, but what it looks like is that they enjoy being part of the Maryland program. Or do you guys remember the post? If you don't, if you have Instagram, you can look at it with Coach Laxley with the shirt off, and it says like players, coach. They all have the shirt off, and it's like a gym. Like I love that because that shows Coach Laxley getting into it, getting into the like lift and whatever, and showing okay, just because I'm the coach, that doesn't mean I'm above you. It's a really cool picture, and I think that kind of shows what Coach Oxley has built over. And he's talked about that. He's talked about how he wants to create a program where 
he wants people to like actually want to be there. And I think Maryland football players have kind of shown that they're happy to be there. Like Talia was always smiling all the time. Talia could have went somewhere else to play. Remember, a school offered like one point five million dollars or whatever to play an SEC school, and he decided to stick with Maryland. That's kind of the culture that we built. Remember a couple of years ago, Deontay Banks was at our spring game after getting drafted by the Giants. That's really cool stuff. I really like that Maryland football's culture is in that type of spot where people are coming back, people are celebrating it, people feel good about it. It feels like there's a happy energy around it. It feels like we're getting a lot of really good players as well in the 2025 class, and I think people are talking about it. And I like that, and I like that our culture's in the right spot, and it's led to winning games. We've won a good amount of games over the last couple of years, like three straight bowl games, and it just feels like the players love to be a part of it and love each other. That's all we have for today. Thank you for listening to Locked on Terp. Make sure you like and subscribe. We are every day talking about football and basketball. So thank you for listening to Locked on Terps.